Why is Malawi sending hundreds of its young men to Israel at a time of war, supposedly to work on farms? Malawi is packaging this as a labor export deal. I use the word supposedly because there has been time for Israel to seal this deal with Malawi. Why now? It could have done it in 2021 when Malawi became one of the first African countries to open an embassy in Jerusalem. Why didn't Israel seal a deal with Malawi at that time or in the subsequent years? Why now? Could it be because Israel's economy is taking a major beating and Israel cannot afford to lose more revenue from farms that now have a huge labor gap? And could this be why two weeks ago, Israel gave Malawi a $60 million aid package? I have always told you that this aid that comes to Africa always has chains attached. Look, I know that Malawi's economy is at a bad place. Malawi's currency has recently been devalued by 44%. The cost of living has shot through the roof. I know that jobs are scarce, but there are better ways of finding employment for Malawi's youth than sending them to a war zone for supposed employment. And as if this wasn't scary of a news enough, Kenya follows suit by sending 1,500 farm workers to Israel. Labor Ministry has said, reading from this article, um, Kenya follows Malawi in sending farm workers to Israel amid Hamas war. The announcement comes nearly two weeks after Malawi sent 221 young people to work on Israel farms, triggering a backlash against the government today. The casual workers will be deployed on three-year renewal contracts with a guaranteed net monthly income of $1,500, Kenya said. Israel has turned to Africa to fill a severe labor gap on its farms after a mass exit of foreign workers. More than 10,000 migrant farm workers, mostly Thailand nationals, have left Israel since the start of the war with Hamas in early October. See, people are leaving the country, but our own leaders are sending our people there. Now, wow, now wow. Israel has also bad Palestinian workers who made up nearly 20% of the agricultural labor force prior to the war. Israel's ambassador in Kenya, Michael Lotem, told the BBC that Israel was planning to recruit farm workers from Uganda as well. While recruiting in Tanzania had already started. Hmm. Africa, my Africa. We are looking to East Africa to fill the labor gap as we have had student internships programs in place for many years with these countries and it has been a good experience, Mr. Lutem said. He added that the labor shortage had been caused by the fact that an estimated 360,000 Israeli reservists have been called up for military service since the war started. He did not cite work restrictions on Palestinians or the departure of foreign nationals as the reason for the shortage. Of course, he didn't. Of course, he did not. Israeli's agriculture ministry told CNN last week that the country needed 30 to 40,000 farm workers. The announcement has sparked mixed reactions in Kenya with some concerned about the workers' safety, which we all should be concerned. <sighs> Let me calm down. At least 32 Thai farm workers were killed and several others taken hostage when Hamas attacked Israel on October the 7th. Tanzanian student Clemens Felix Mtenga, who was in Israel as an agriculture intern, was also killed in the attack, while another Tanzanian student, Joshua Loitsu Molel, is still missing. Critics have also questioned the conditions the workers will face in Israel. In 2018, a BBC investigation found that many migrant farm workers in Israel were subject to unsafe working practices and squalid, unsanitary living conditions. Some were overworked, others underpaid, and there were dozens of unexplained deaths. Right groups like Human Rights Watch have also previously raised the alarm over Israel's treatment of foreign farm laborers. At the time, Israel denied the accusations and has since said that foreign workers enjoy the same employment rights as Israeli citizens. <coughs> 
believe them folks at your own risk. The evidence they many full grand but yeah, of course they said that, right? Let's continue. Mr. Totem said extra measures have since been put in place to ensure foreign workers are treated fairly and that any foreign worker can now file a complaint, a complaint which will be quickly tracked. Some Kenyans have supported the deal saying it provides badly needed jobs at a time when Kenya is battling an unemployment crisis and a rising cost of living. Kenya has an unemployment rate of 5.5% according to the World Bank. Malawi's government has also announced that it will send 5,000 more young people to work on Israel's farm, rejecting calls to drop the plan. People are going out of desperation, said William Kambwandira, the executive director at the Center of Social Accountability and Transparency, a workers' rights watchdog based in the capital Lilongwe. Given that the war is happening, we are concerned about the welfare of these young men and women, he added. However, Mr. Totem told the BBC that the farm workers would not be placed in areas close to the conflict and they would have the same protection as Israelis. I think I've gotten the whole gist of what's going on here, so I'm going to stop reading. I understand exactly what is going on on the continent and how, you know, it's hard, right? There are no jobs like that and the standard of living is constantly rising. But at the end of the day, our government leaders deciding to make this decision makes absolutely no sense. And it screams to me, puppets, puppeting. That's why it screams to me. Because what sane leader would send their people to such a place at such a time? It makes absolutely no sense. It's giving, they don't collect smart sin behind closed door and now they are making outright foolish decisions in public. That's why it's giving to me. It's giving puppets, puppeting. See who they are choosing to align with. See who they are choosing to go help. Israel. That says a lot. And for those of us who don't know, earlier they actually reached out to India asking india to you know help them with workers now i don't even know how india responded let me quickly check okay i'm seeing here that india rejected they said no because they stand with um palestine this um article here says indian trade union stand with palestine rejects sending workers to israel and this article was posted 29th november 2023 so india was a no um, when Israel was talking about them sending workers down. The Indian working class cannot be a party to this genocidal initiative by Israel, and marching orders to Palestinian workers working on Israeli soil is a part of that overall genocidal attack. Workers cannot be a party to the heinous exercise. Tapan Kumar Sen, Secretary General of the Center of Indian Trade Unions, told Arab News. Members of the Center of Indian Trade Unions, as well as of the All Indian Trade Union Congress and other Indian members of the World Federation of Trade Unions, wore black badges to work on Wednesday and took part in its sit-ins, marches, and site protests. This is an observation in support of solidarity with Palestinians and demanding that the Indian government play a role instead of being soft on Israel, Sen said. We demand that Israel must vacate all the occupied territory of the Palestinian areas identified as Palestinian homeland with Jerusalem as capital. So this is what other people are doing in their countries. But my beloved continent. Hey. You reach African so-called leader stone. See where they are going. See the decisions that they are making. See where they are choosing to stand and see who they are choosing to stand with. Everybody is going like this. Them, they're just this war. At this point, it's so embarrassing. It's annoying. It's sickening the way these people operate. And I'm so freaking sick and tired of them. There is no way this is the right decision to make. Like, I get it. It's hard. Life is hard. Cost of living is going up. And um, there are no works like that in these countries. But that is their job, though, to provide jobs for their people. Not send them out to a Zionist occupying state that is presently warring and colonizing another group of people 
so they can go there and risk their lives helping this group of people that hell don't even like them to go help them build their country and go help them effectively colonize well like it, it's just crazy it's so it, it's making my blood boil thinking about what exactly is going on right now like it's absolutely insane and i am so disappointed i'm so disgusted by these people who are making these decisions and sending our people there there are no jobs in the country there are no jobs in the continent create jobs like for goodness sakes like come on now come on evidence shows that this is a very bad idea and yes if you go online you would see some malawians talking about how they are not complaining with this decision like you know it's something that they need which i understand because life is hard standard of living is high people need to put bread on their table but it's up to them leaders to make sure that people can put bread on their table still in their countries and there is an aspect that i want to bring to this conversation as well but i already made a video on that on my tiktok so i'm just going to you know add that clip in the sheer audacity of the israeli government is unreal please ignore the little white dust you can see on my face one thing about colonizers is that it doesn't matter where they are located it doesn't matter what religion they practiced they all use the same playbook. So Israel, after revoking the work permits of thousands of Palestinians, they are now going to India to go request for India to come work and help build their country. But I'm not surprised at all with this update though. I'm not surprised that this is how they choose to go. Why? Because historically speaking, this is on brand colonizer behavior. They don't build anything for themselves. As a matter of fact, they cannot build anything for themselves. Look at America, for example, or the UK. How were those countries built with the use of slave labor enslaved Africans built those countries? South Africa, very close to home, is another very good example. If they are not enslaving the indigenous there and using them to build the country against their will, they are bringing in foreigners, foreign people of color, in to either come join the POCs or make them do the work. That's how they build. They don't do nothing with their bare hands. Nothing do these people do with their bare hands. They get other people to come do it either for free against their will or for very cheap. And when these people are done building, then they come in to take the credit. See, nobody can convince me that there isn't a colonizer handbook somewhere. Where these people are taking cues from, taking tips from, passing back and forth to each other to help them effectively colonize. Because the way they all use the same tactics, they all play by the same rules. There is definitely a book out there that they are taking instruction from. It's a photocopied behavior. It's insane the way these people can never build nothing with their hands. They don't do, they don't lift these hands to do nothing. Because tell me why, and now that they've taken away the working permits of the Palestinians that were doing the work in Israel, why can't they get their, 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 their white people to go down there to Israel to do that work? Why can't they? I'll tell you why. For one, they don't want to have to pay the right amount that they would need to pay if they have to get their people in to come do that work. These people are so in love with slave labor and underpayments of workers. That's why they never get their own people to come in and do this work because they don't want to pay. They would rather they have slaves, but because we know it's 2023, they can't really exactly enslave people like that, especially with all the eyes now that they have on them. People are talking about what's going on. We would rather we don't pay. But because we have to pay now for this labor, you know, let's get people in that we can give coins to. That's what is happening here. They want people that can come in and get little to nothing for this work. And at the same time, people that they can oppress during that same process of them working for them. Those are the people that they are looking for. Because why else don't they get their own people to come work in their countries? And it's the same thing that's happening to tomorrow. When we see these Western countries always reaching out to African countries, POC countries, talking about we, have, we are giving you people visa, we are starting visa lottery process, we are doing this, we are doing that, come to our countries. Why? They're encouraging these people to come over because they need these POC people to come work and help them build their countries. It's repackaged slavery. Our ancestors got nothing, now you get stipends. That's what they are doing. And I know right now I'm derailing back to Israel and India. These people cannot do jack when it comes to building. That's why they are always outsourcing labor. 
So I would even add that they are lazy. But they will be the first to scream that other people are lazy though. When you look at their history, they are the ones who did not get to do any work. Every other person came in and built for them. Look at America, they want to build railway. They had to get in the Chinese. And after getting these people in, what did they do to them at, at the end of it all? They put these people in, 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 in concentration camps. What did they... See, it, it's crazy. They cannot build nothing. They, they cannot do anything on their own. They have to always come get other people to do it. But they are the ones who are quick to call other people lazy. They call African Americans lazy. Their ancestors built their country. How are they lazy? The only thing I have seen that them folks have been able to do on their own, it's unalive in mass. When it comes to kill people, and they don't look for help to do it. They do it with their food chest on their own. They get energy from nowhere. The energy that they cannot use, uh, find to build, they have that energy to kill people and steal their lands. Like, it's crazy. That's the only thing I have seen that these people can effectively do on their own. They don't outsource help to do it. They don't go and look for Indians to kill when it's time to kill. They don't go and look for Africans to kill when it's time to kill. They don't go and look for the Chinese when it's time to kill. But when it's time to walk, when it's time to build, when it's time to be ten toes down in the field with your hands doing all of this building, then they go and look for people to do it. These people cannot do jack. Also, when it comes to inventing, they cannot invent nothing. The majority of the things we use today were invented by black people and people of color. Look at them folks when they wanted to colonize. These people wanted to go on a mission to kill. But the weapon that they even used to go and colonize people, black powder that they needed, they were not the ones that even invented it. They had to use another 500 years, I'll be how many hundred years, to get to China and go get their black powder that they had invented and were using for fireworks and their celebrations for happy things in China. These people found a way to get to China so they can get this um, tool and use it to colonize the world, including the Chinese. It's like the only thing these people are skilled at is disaster, causing destruction and mayhem. That is their only talent. That's the, that's the only talent that they have and also trying to paint themselves as victims in the process of causing all of the evil, as well as paint themselves as the good guy, as the angel. The only talent these people have is causing mayhem, destruction, murdering people, stealing people's invention, and then um, lying, add lying to it, and you know, play victim. White, white tears and um you know paint themselves as, as angels after committing all of the atrocities then they come out and want to be the saints at the end of the story the same thing they did in africa the same thing they did in congo citing leopold now and you know his boy boys that helped him accomplish all of the things he did in the 1800s in congo like if they want something they cannot do it for themselves they always have to find a way to use someone to get that thing Leopold was in Congo. He loved rubber. He needed rubber. He wanted rubber. You would think that he would find a way to come to an agreement with these people so they can, he can trade with them. So that they would enjoy, he would enjoy. You would think, okay, now you'd be like, okay, I'll get some of my people down so we can do this work. You get some of your people, let's both enjoy from this. No. Let's enslave the Congolese in Congo and make them do the work and get us the rubber we need. While we sit down and wash them with weapons. It's a historical behavior. It's a behavior now that at this point, I think it's in their DNA. It's a colonizer. They have to be a colonizer gene at this point. Alive and, you know, doing what gene does. A colonizer DNA. I'm sure if you look at these people's DNA series, and you would see a gene there that, or a whatever it calls there in the DNA makeup that stands for the colonizer, the colonizer gene, the colonizer DNA. At this point, it flows through the blood. It's, it's, it's biological. Well, guys, what are your thoughts really? Are you as frustrated as I am? Please let me know down below in the comment section. And, um, yeah. I'm so pissed and frustrated and just like sick and tired of them folks, both them folks and you know our own folks cones that are coning and, and, and puppeting and selling us out like I'm so freaking tired of them.